on in. Welcome to Home Keepers. How wonderful to be here today and to know that you're out there. Uh, grab a cup of tea or something and just stay with us. This is going to be a really good program. And if you've never joined us before, uh, try to understand what the name of the show is, Home Keepers. And we need a lot more of those in our country today. And another term, really, you, I think you could mix it up even scripturally, would be gatekeeper. Is there anybody keeping your home, keeping the evil away and keeping the home and somebody at the gate uh, to keep evil out? There's so many, so many wonderful meanings to this word homekeepers. And I think that's a heart's cry for so many in America today. So thanks for being there. Thanks for supporting us uh, when you write to us. Uh, it helps us to stay on the air and we appreciate it. One of my favorite guests back today, she's been on here two or three times. Her name is Jody Matthews. She is a doer. She's a wife, a mother, wonderful Christian, and a court reporter, which I find beyond fascinating, and an author of a book that is really going very, very well. It's called Revelation Simply Put. We have offered it in the past or maybe a year or so ago, and you can see that it is a big book and it's got all kinds of pictures and guides and things in color that you can uh, really learn about the book. I, My hat's off to her for tackling something like this. Uh, I am not an expert on Revelation, I'll tell you that. I can read through it and... Uh, don't understand a lot of it, but she has made it, as she said, simply put. So we're going to talk about that and also about the end times, the uh, politics, the Antichrist, uh, things that are laid out in the book of Revelation. And then I'm going to join Stephanie because it's still strawberry season in Florida. And if you think we're fixing too many <laughs> recipes out of strawberries, Boy, we got a lot more, but today it says strawberry crisp. Just wish you could smell it. It smells so good and full of fresh, fresh strawberries, fresh Florida strawberries, by the way. So I'll join her, but again, I want to offer you this book. See how big it is, how nice it is. It's wonderful quality, and it's yours for that gift of $20 that includes your shipping. So um, that's huge, by the way, because it's a big book. And if you order your things, you know, uh, with a credit card or debit card, there's an 800 number for you, 1-800-229-0059. And the address is on the screen. A lot of you like to send us a note and send us a, uh, an offering, which is great. And uh, that's Homekeepers Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And we will get it out to you. And hello, Stephanie. Hello there. How are you? I like your outfit. Thanks. It's Casual Friday. You get what you do, <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> we don't usually tape on Fridays. But I know, and you're more comfortable than I am. <laughs> Alexis sure. got me this for Christmas, so mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite shirts. Oh, so. and it feels good. It's flannel. Yeah, it's nice. Nothing like I like flannel. it. Well, um, you're kind of feeling bad because you don't get to go to the Strawberry Festival this mm -hmm. year. Why don't we tell the people about it? Because it's... It's like a great big, maybe state fair or county, sure. certainly yes. a big county mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything you can expect at a fair is there, but strawberries everywhere. And everything on a stick. Anything and, you can eat yeah. on a stick. And, um, and deep fried. <laughs> the strawberry shortcake. Oh, the way they get out there oh, by the thousands is so pretty interesting. Delicious. Yes, but I'm also, so every major kind of star is there a mm -hmm. lot of country stars mm -hmm. yeah and one year the Gaither vocal band was yes one mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Donnie and Marie this year and yeah I looked in the paper I say there are at least 20 different Acts. groups yeah that are coming oh yeah soon. they bring them in it, it's amazing yeah it's, it's plant city it's not like a big you know right it's plant city but boy they bring them in and my, a lot of you around the country probably eat plant city strawberries mm -hmm. i'm sure they go lots everywhere. of great food lots of great people mm -hmm. it's just fun so that's part of florida but go early if you're going to go because <laughs> later on in the day it's packed yeah yeah okay so strawberry crisp for me mm -hmm. and oh my gosh does it smell delicious so you have strawberries mm -hmm. you have sugar cornstarch, lemon zest, mm -hmm. lemon juice, and salt. And mm -hmm. you're just mixing all those mm -hmm. together. We are. And then I'm making the top. I have cubed butter. I have oats, rolled oats. I have flour, sugar, brown sugar, nuts, and salt. And I'm going to mix all mine together. And we're going to put them all 
together, and oh my gosh, it smells so good mm -hmm. with that lemon, doesn't it? The lemon, yeah. Which is one of your favorite things. The, yeah. What's not to love about lemon? That's my yeah. motto. And uh, this is... Don't forget the this, sugar. This little cornstarch in here, right? Yes, it adds a little thickening agent yeah. to it. I'm just going to get in here in my hands. It's easier. All right. And... Let's see, the last time we did strawberries, I don't know if it was the last show, uh, we made strawberry. an easy strawberry pie. pie. And oh, was it good. I bet we're going to get a ton of orders. And then we had leftovers the next day from it, and it was even better. Mm hmm. Yes, it was very good. Um, if you're a new viewer, all of our recipes, you can ask for them, and they're absolutely free. Mm -hmm. You have email. Which is That's the easiest way. The best way. way. Yes. But we are more than happy to send them through the mail mm -hmm. if you don't have a computer. Yep. And you can always go on my Facebook page because I try to put a lot of the recipes up. Plus, we have Pinterest, a Pinterest page, Earthlings uh, Homekeepers Recipe Pinterest page. So there's all kinds of ways you can get them. Now, does this go in here? After you spray it, yes. Because okay. this is going to be sticky. For all yes. the tea lovers out there like myself, this is the perfect compliment. Oh, yes. So your strawberry, sugar, cornstarch, yeah. lemon zest, lemon salt mixture is going in there. I have a feeling the the lemon is going to be what makes this just... And this is half, just so everyone yeah. knows when you're making yours. I'm glad you like remembered that. so much more. We just did a half a recipe because we do two, and we didn't want to have an abundance. Well, we could have had an abundance. That wouldn't have been a problem, but it costs money. Okay. That's true. Yeah. So we just have to. I wonder what strawberries cost in other parts of the country. Oh gosh, I don't reasonable I know. Here. So if you'd bring that over here, please. So I'm just taking my butter, oats, sugar, brown sugar mixture, and I'm just pouring it over the top, and then you just bake it. And um, 45 minutes. I'll never forget the article I read that any recipe that has sugar, you can cut it way back. It's not going to make any difference in the recipe. And that's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, so With baking, you need to be a little more careful. But mm -hmm. Oh, now, going to see Look something so beautiful. Oh. I happen to believe that all the guys that are back there, yes. audio, video, all those people are going to be up here. As the credits roll. Yes. That's what I think. Great. Now, it probably should set a little bit longer. Yeah, because that is steaming hot. I can see steaming, it, so steaming. be careful. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Arsene Rippey doesn't know how to do it right. Oh, I know. It. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mentioned that's like they have a cheesecake factory. Except they have a big tube, right? You it said comes through a hose. hose. <laughs> yeah. I think I need one of those at like home. Like a fire <laughs> extinguisher. <laughs> Okay, I'm okay, going to be careful. Careful. Because care mm -hmm. you have to talk to somebody. I just have to go we back upstairs. We know this is going to taste good. Oh, my, my, my. Mm. That's one of the best things we've ever made, ever. Mm. I told Jody if she's good, we'll ever have some. So. Oh, my gosh. That pressure's is on. So good. Yeah, this is uh, that topping. They really got that right. So. Yes. If you want it, it's called. Uh, Strawberry crisp. And by the way, this would work with about any fruit, wouldn't it? Sure. It would be, you know what would be really good with? Blueberries. Uh huh. Oh, God. Yeah. Yes. You, you get your basic crisp crisp. My, mm -hmm. my daughter. A makes berry, it. any berry fruit. Yeah. yeah. So you can keep that in mind if your strawberries are not in season. Okay, stay there. Uh, information's coming up on your screen. If you want this, uh, we'll be glad for you to have it. If you haven't met Jody, you're going to love her, so stay with me. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. You know, sometimes you meet somebody and you get that sense they're really fulfilling their purpose. Uh, that's what I believe about Jody, and uh, she's a wife, mother, Christian, 
court reporter and author. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for having me back, yeah. Arlene. Always good to be down here in Florida. Always. <laughs> She's been rubbing it in her husband's face. Uh, it's winter time and uh, he's in Michigan. So. Yes, yes, he yeah. is. Gonna have to plan better next time so he can come with you. Yeah, he probably would have hopped on. on yeah, um, were you, you were born in a Christian home? Yes, I was. Yes, born in a Christian home. My mother and dad served the Lord. And uh, then at the age of 17, I have a personal encounter with the Lord himself. And it's just amazing how he comes to us. You know, you can sometimes be going to church and you're clueless. Oh, yeah. You know, and I was going to church, you know, because my parents took me. Sure. And, uh, and I still enjoyed church, though, but it still hadn't became a personal faith. And then at 17, really, the Lord... He comes and has a personal encounter, and then from there I began to seek him as a personal faith, not because my parents told me. So, yeah. And um, you do so many things so well. I mean, you have to be a good court reporter. You wouldn't have been doing it as long as you've been doing it. Well, what was it about that? Because that fascinates me. Because you can see in the movies, or if, if you're in the courtroom, and this, this person's just sitting there looking around, <laughs> yes. not missing yeah. one word. No. We're trained to do 225 words a minute, and it's the most quietest field. You know, many people don't know much about us, but it's a great field to be in, and it's the most interesting. So many people are always looking, how is she getting this? Well, I'll give you a clue. The average person speaks uh, 180 words a minute. We are trained to type or write, we actually call it writing on the machine, 225 words a minute. So we're able to get all the people and multiple speakers. So it's a, it's a great field, it really is. I love is it. Is it, would it be like a shorthand machine? Yes, it's a shorthand machine. Because it's not letters. No, not letters at all. Well, it is letters, it's made up of letters, but a number of letters make up large phrases for us. And have you ever had some attorney that talks real, real, real fast and you had a problem? All the time. And oh. you just give him the look because we can't say anything <laughs> too much, but you're looking at him like, slow down, boy. Come on. Come on, counsel. Come on. Let's slow it down. So, And that's why I love law. It's so amazing that God will put me in that field because it has now helped me to understand the law of his word in such a magnificent way when I read about judges. I, mm -hmm. I work with judges, you know, and I work with federal judges. You know, these judges are appointed by the president. So now I have a new respect and understanding of judges, the judges in the Bible, and when we talk about kings and meeting presidents. And God set all that up. And God set it all up. So I have the best sides of both world on the natural as well as the spiritual. He set me up for that. I get a chance to hear it all. And it's amazing sometimes, even afterwards, uh, uh, my judge that I was working for, uh, Judge Duggan, he would come back and he would say, so what do you think the jurors are going to do? <laughs> and I'm like, you're asking my opinion, Judge. You know, you're the well, judge. Well, you've been amazing. there enough. Yes. Yeah. And he's like, you've heard all the evidence, so you're going to have a pretty, they would trust my opinion. And it made me think about Daniel working for Kings and uh -huh. they always gave great respect to them. So, yeah. Uh, have you done any... Uh famous or really well-known murder trials aren't those do I, those do those ever have you on the edge of your seat they do so and you still have to learn how to keep your composure i think some of one of the biggest trials that we had was the one with our former mayor uh, i didn't i sat in Is that on, detroit yes oh yeah Detroit, <laughs> and he was there i would run into him even in the hall and um it, he's in jail, was, isn't he? It, he's in prison now. Oh. So uh, it, it was that was one of the more fascinating cases. I did a, just a couple of days on that case and just hearing the evidence and meeting even some of the players uh, that were in there. Um, it, it was just very interesting. Oh, I think that's one, and I only sat in just on one day. I was like filling in. So I think that's one of the bigger cases. And yeah. I kept, you know, running into different ones like, wow. Well, that, that was different. Yeah, and uh, serving the Lord, no matter where you are, you know, it's, it can be pretty interesting. It's it not a boring life. Okay, now the next question is, why is a nice girl like you with 66 books in the Bible, <laughs> uh, why did you choose to write this big book on Revelation? Well, Simply put, which, that's great. That, that, that was genius. Uh, to add the simply put. Yes. You know, how long have I started reading the Bible? And 
I wanted to get better. I was scared of that book. The book scared me. That would be me. me. <laughs> and that's what you would hear in Christendom. That's all you heard. But it was amazing because it was in the Bible, but we never read it. Or if we did read it, it was with much fear. So here's this inspiration that comes up. And actually, I was looking back over my notes. I was reading Revelation. I've been teaching it for 10 years. I could not believe. I said, God, you've brought me far with this book. And I found out that there's good news in Revelation that we should not fear and there should not be any anxiety. God has given his people so much information concerning the end times. We don't have to allow the world to dictate to us anything. We should tell them more so uh, as we deal with the end times because so many people keep thinking about the end, the end, the end. Yeah, and the fear. It's the end yeah. of all things and revelation does not, I mean, it, it, God it's just, the revelation it's, of Jesus the Christ. The revelation, very first verse, the revelation of Jesus Christ. And most people would think it's the revelation of Antichrist. And also, we do know if you don't understand a word, we know that Jesus wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the end of the book, you know. If you don't understand a word, he does. He uh -huh. wins at the very end. And actually, not only does he win, we win. And, and that's what sometimes we forget, mm -hmm. that God has included us in here. And he said, at the end, you win and you will not be hurt, harmed, left behind. So I, I say, okay, let's write this book and let's make it simply put. Let's put it in picture form. And so my thing is, do you want to understand the most complex book in the world, but yet in a very simple manner? Mm -hmm. You know, and we put it, the publishers, we got together and they said, we, that's why we had to do those dimensions because I said, all right, let's put it in a commentary form. Every verse is commented upon. Mm -hmm. So you're not just, you know, I'm not writing about Revelation, giving an opinion. Let's go verse by verse. Also with scholarly mm -hmm. articles, you know, there are great men and women of God who have studied before me. I, I've also built upon, I thank God for them even giving me leeway to use their material. So it's built upon some scholarly material, very solid, biblical but sound understandable, foundation, but very understood. And I think that's what all of us wanted. I just want to understand. Yeah. And trust me, once you get done with that, so many people, I love this book. Uh -huh. Told you, you would love it. Now you are here to speak uh, for some ladies meetings. Yes, I am. And we've got that information on the screen. Uh, you can tell what a spark plug she is. <laughs> and uh, she'd probably really energize uh, any group in your church. So take that information and uh, she can get away, uh, you know, for retreats and conferences and so forth. And I understand this last one went very, very well. And you oh, got one later yes. today. Yes, I have one later today. And it's on Revelation. Can you imagine, imagine mm -hmm. it? People are inviting me to teach on this book. That used to be the book they say, don't bring that in my church because it's too controversial. Mm -hmm. Okay, a book of God is too controversial. Well, let's to be find, in the church. To be in the church. <laughs> Isn't that oxymoronic? How, you know, it's hot. Come on. Mm -hmm. It belongs in the church. And in fact, there's even a Bible. There's even a verse in there that Jesus says, teach this in the churches. Yeah. That's a command. He said, teach this book in the churches. So Now, I want to go over this quickly because I want to get into the Antichrist. But, yes, um, yes. You say that... Um, that prophecy and polit uh, politics can can relate to our elections and so forth, which we are oh. uh, embroiled in right now oh, as we make this yes. program. Coming up with the 2016 election, we have to st let's stop and take a look at prophecy and politics. Politics is a bad word in Christendom, mm -hmm. but if you stop to take a look at it, the word politics, polis, uh, it actually means people. Okay, politics, polis, that, it means important. That's why we have metropolis, metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. It means the most important city. Police to enforce. So uh, it means to be for the people or to make decisions for the people. That's actually what politicians do. And what God will do, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. When we deal with politics, we shouldn't shy away from this, this word. When we deal with politics and prophecy, God is very much for politics. And let me tell you why. If we really, we just seen the definition, but Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 states, For unto us a child is given, uh, for unto us a son is born, and the government mm -hmm. shall be upon his, his shoulders. shoulders. Now really pay very close attention to that word government, because government stands for, uh, it actually creates money. For who? 
the people. The government builds things for who? The, the people. people. They build hospitals, they build roads, they build libraries. The government, they, they, they actually tell us about the laws and tell the people what they can and cannot do. That's amazing that God would link Christ's kingdom to government policies because when Christ comes, he is, let's put it simply put, he's bringing his government. Mm -hmm. And so that is awesome because through politics, God will bring Christ, bring in Christ's government, which is gonna be, and God says when he brings in his government, when we look at the government now, a lot of us can't stand it. I even heard one person said the word politics should be called politrix. <laughs> you know, because it's such tricks and that is, liars. That preachers. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? You, you, God is going to use that. It's, it's almost like really politicians are supposed to be here to help the people, to help better the people, to help build us up. It isn't to, supposed to be to take from us like it is, you know, it has been turned over today. But God says when the true politician comes, Jesus Christ. It's kind of hard to look at him like that, but mm -hmm. let's look at it from the definition of this original root mm -hmm. word sure. for Makes the sense. people to make the people very important. He's going to bring in a government. I talk about this in chapter 20. That's going to be bar none. When Jesus comes, he has health care. That's going to be bar none. <laughs> none of us is going to get sick. When Jesus comes, he's going to be, I come from Michigan. We've had the Flint water crisis. Mm -hmm which the government did a very poor job in, 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 in having these pipes not change. Criminal. Well, when, it's a, it, it it's really criminal. is a criminal act. Well, when Jesus comes for his government, he's going to bring in fresh water from the temple. I give visual verse by verse. That's why Jesus said, well, under my government, when the government falls on my shoulder, basically as the president of the world or the king of the world, he says it's going to be just a bar none type of government that he's going to be giving to the people. He's going to be giving to us. He's going to be healing us. Uh, there won't be, uh, let me throw in one more as, as relates to the government. When we talk about government policies, think about this. The Bible is very much for uh, government, government policies. Mm -hmm. They'll say, Mr. President, what are you going to do about gun laws? Mm -hmm. Guns have been a horrible thing over here in America. It's been very hard. Well, Jesus Christ says, when I get in office, when I bring my kingdom, men are going to take their weapons and beat them into plowshares. <laughs> but, <laughs> there will be no weapons on earth when Christ comes. But I talk we need about them this. presently. <laughs> we need them <laughs> presently. And you know why? Because it's under man's domain. Government has been in the hands of man. Sin. And so this is why God says politics and government is very important because Jesus Christ is bringing in his government, which is going to be glorious. That is a wonderful Simply explanation. Put, if you're understanding yeah. that, yeah. yeah. And so basically, I want to get to the Antichrist, but basically this one. election, pray. My last newsletter that went out was all about prayer and Franklin Graham having these prayer meetings on Capitol Steps, all 50 states. You got to pray, Ooh, Christians, yes. about this and then be informed. I'm just not against having some kind of a some kind of a bar set to vote. You know, yes. uh, first place you should be a legal citizen. <laughs> but there are, there are other things that uh, it just, uh, it's just another show, another subject actually, but uh, <laughs> there, there, should, there should be some kind of a, a requirement uh, to vote. And uh, one of the main one of course is uh, that you can read the ballot and that um, some, somewhat informed. Okay, now, um, the Antichrist, uh, when I was a little girl, mm -hmm. which was a long time ago, they named several. <laughs> They're oh, all dead now. Yes. They're all dead now. Uh, but this is a real person, is it not? It is definitely a real person. Uh, it's such a real person that the book of Daniel, I talk about this on page 100, specifically in my book, details about the Antichrist. God devotes a third, Revelation chapter 13 to him, Revelation chapter 6, basically two chapters out of the 22 chapters, but he is a real person. Daniel said he's so real when he seen the horns, he said this little horn had eyes of a man to denote, to connotate that this will be, this man will be in man form. The book of Revelation chapter 13 tells us, and Satan gave him his power. It didn't say it's a thing or a spiritual thing. Now, don't for granted, uh, John talks about the Antichrist. He said mm -hmm. there is a spirit of Antichrist, right. and there is also the person of Antichrist who will arise in the last days. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so there is a person of the Antichrist that will be a real, actual person that Satan will work through. And look, he's going to be a politician because if wherever there is politics, there is power. Do you believe he's alive today? I'm going to share this with you. I, sh I believe that he is alive today. He has not been revealed. His identity is cloaked. Mm -hmm. But God gives many details about the Antichrist. I've heard from what I thought were reputable um, ministers and prophets, so forth, mm -hmm. they believe he'll come out of the old Roman Empire. They're correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm, and I'm going to tell you why. Daniel tell you, you know what's so funny? What people don't know is God gives the saints all the details about him and says this is where he would come from. God give us location, and it does. The book of Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 says, he will be of the people, he will come out of the people and the nations that destroyed the temple in 70 A.D. Well, who was that? The Roman mm -hmm. Empire mm -hmm. were the people who destroyed the temple in 70 mm -hmm. A.D. So when we start to equate the Antichrist with a political figure, right now and try to identify him. That's where we're kind of going in error and we get off on these little yeah. paths and trails. To, He's Obama. <laughs> well, Obama's been in office for seven years. He's getting ready to come out. Uh -huh. He didn't go and make a covenant with Israel. Mm -hmm. God, there's a specific thing that the Antichrist yeah, must do. Must and we're going to talk about it's not Hillary, neither is it Donald Trump, <laughs> no, much, no matter how much we might not like that. Process of elimination. Process of elimination. We're going to run out of time. I want to offer you this book one more time. <laughs> uh, and this is the book that Jody has written. It is one of a kind. There's no question. If you want to know about Revelation, you've had books before and you didn't understand one word they said, you will understand this. It's even got colored pictures in it. And the information's on your screen, 1-800-229-0059. And um, that's for your credit card or the address is if you want to send a check in. Uh, Jody, we are um, just about out of time. Yes. When are you going to be back? Because we, we just got started on the Antichrist. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know what? I, I, maybe I'll make a special trip down. We have to deal more with the Antichrist. But I want to share this with you. If you get my book and read chapter 13 and chapter 6, you will see that there's no fear. Antichrist is actually just a tool to be used That's the main thing. by God. To, and, and his end result is going to be the lake of fire. But we as Christians have nothing to fear. We won't uh, see him yeah. at all. Well, let me know when you're coming back. I will. We'll leave that we'll cliff, pick up. cliffhanger right we'll there. We'll pick up there. <laughs> and um, I'm so thankful that uh, she took time, and I think God really put it upon her to write this book so that we can all understand a little better. We are out of time, but please join me next time. Remembering there is no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.